Hello world, welcome to the 202nd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is part two of a series where I'm building my own dividend application that doesn't require me to give all my information to a third party app that which I believe will just sell your information to someone else. So make sure you've watched part one, which you can watch by clicking here because I'm not going to go into all the different methods that I'm already showing here. I'm just going to jump straight into the code and also explain why I'm using Yahoo underscore fin, Yahoo fin library instead of the ubiquitous Y finance. So in the first video, we iterated through an Excel sheet to get all of the stock symbols, uh, put it in a pandas data frame, imported and then we times the share count now this is part of an excel sheet so it is kind of manual because we're not uploading our data you know we're not giving a third party app access to our brokerage account so it reads the excel it finds its annual dividend and then it sums up the total dividend for the whole year and it gives us a great estimate so in this video we're going to be using the annual dividend and another method to get the date of that dividend and then we can get a quarterly or a monthly breakdown of our dividends. So full disclosure, I'm not a pandas expert, so I may have made this slightly more complicated than it needs to be. So if there are any pandas experts out there, please watch this video and leave a comment on how I could probably make this a little easier. So now let's jump into the code. So we're going to import time and date time. And the reason why it's grayed out in PyCharm is because uh, we haven't used it yet because I want to show you in steps. And then just like the previous video, yahoo underscore fin dot stock underscore info, import all of it. Then we're going to import pandas as PD. And just for this video, we'll import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT. And that is to plot out our dividends. But that's not my future state. I'm going to use plotly dash to create more of a um, application website. So you will need to pip install pandas and matplotlib. So again, you should have watched the first video because we've already installed pandas and yahoo fin. Okay, this is code from the previous video. We're going to read an Excel sheet that I have saved called income tracker. And it's going to have shares held. And for the purpose of this video, we're just assuming one share of each of these stocks. And then only for testing and YouTube purposes do I have this code in here. And this allows you to print all the rows and columns, no matter what the width is or the column width in your pandas data frame into your PyCharm console. Okay, so I, I don't I don't plan on printing to my console, of course, right? We're gonna use matplotlib in this video and then future plotly dash. So this is this is code we can get rid of. Um, let's skip, no, let's go through this. Oh, no, 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 let's skip this code, right? This is a function and I'll explain it in a second, but we're going to start into the meat of the code. So for index and the row in our data frame, we're going to iterate through the rows, right? So we're going to go through the row and the index through each row of this Excel sheet. And, uh, let me show that real quick. And this is what it looks like symbol and amount just one of these notice that there's this stock right here coinbase and some mutual funds and i'll talk about that in a second so first we're going to try to get the symbol so symbol equals row symbol and you saw that was the the symbol column right so that's what you're calling here then we're doing data equals get underscore quote underscore data and this is one of our yahoo fin libraries and then we're going to look up that symbol and then the date is going to be data and then like you, i saw in the previous video it's going to give you a dividend date right the day of the video and then so that's a string it comes into a json right and it shows the the minute the, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, the second, and the year. Um, and so, but that's just a string. So when you get it from this JSON right here, we just want the dividend date. 
Then we need to make it time. So we're using C time here. And then we're going to make it a, um, a date time object. So month and year equals date time dot date time dot strp time. We're going to pass it the real date. This is the format it's going to be in, okay? And then I just want the month. So once I have this into this method right here, a date time object, I just want the month and it's going to give me a numerical number, a 1 for January, a 4 for April, 7 for July. And, and you can, if you're not familiar with how date time objects works, you can do year equals month year dot year. You can do day, but we just need the month, right? So this is the month in which the dividend is going to pay out. And so you're only going to get one date. It's either going to show you the date it just paid, plus or minus, I think, 30 days, or the next dividend date, whichever one's closer. We just need one, right? So what we're going to do, if the month is, and we're assuming quarterly dividends here. So in the future, we're going to have to build logic in to, to identify if it's a quarterly paying dividend stock, a yearly paying dividend stock, monthly. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to assume it pays out four times every three months. Okay, that's a normal stock. So if the month is January, April, July, or October, so right, so if this month right here is the number one, which means the dividend is going to pay out in January, then we're going to do quarterly dividend equals get quarterly dividend, and we're passing it the symbol, which is up here. So what is this right here? This is the function we passed over. So get quarterly dividend. It's going to take this symbol. Then the share count equals the float of row amount. So if you remember for our Excel sheet, we had symbol and amount. And for this purposes, it's one share. I'm assuming one share. And so this is slightly different than the method we used uh, before. So, so we're going to do a try and accept. So we're going to get some errors. So the first thing we're going to do is do table data equals get quote table. Right down here we did get quote data. We're doing get quote table. Pass it the symbol. The dividend yield, this is the annual dividend equals table data. And then the JSON key is for dividend and yield. And if you remember from the previous video, that gives us a string that has the forward dividend, which is a dollar amount, and the yield, which is a percentage. So we're going to split that into annual dividend equals dividend yield dot split, because this is a string. And then we're going to have one item, which is the dollar amount, and another item, which is the percentage rate. So in the zero with index, or the first item in this index, is going to be our dividend string. So, so let's say it's Apple and it's going to pay a dollar a year, right? So now in this right here, we have a string that just has the number 1.00, I think. So then we're going to take this, so we're going to give this quarterly dividend equals, we're going to round it by two decimal places. That's what this is. And then we're going to take a float of this string right here. That way we can do math. And the math we're doing is divided by 4. So in the Apple case, which is not real, but it's, if it's a dollar, right? This is a dollar as a string. So we're going to make it a float. Then we're going to divide it by 4. So it's 25 cents. But let's say it was 0 0.3333. Then we're going to round that down to just 33 cents. And then times the share count. So in our case, that's only one share, right? So if this is a dollar, then we would have 25 cents in this variable called quarterly dividend. And then we're going to return that quarterly dividend. If you get a key error, we're going to pass, just like in the previous video. If you get a value error, that means the case does not have a dividend 
or the dividend has been suspended. And then if you get an index error, you're going to pass as well. And so these, uh, these will try or catch all the errors that you might get. So now we're going to return this quarterly dividend, right? So if we get any errors, it's going to pass. So remember, if you see that coin stock symbol I showed you, it's just not going to be in our data frame. So now we have the quarterly dividend. It's going to be the afloat now. It's going to be rounded, and it's just going to be that quarter's times the share count, right? So that's what we have in this. So quarterly dividend equals get quarterly dividend symbol. And now for the quarters in January, April, July, October, which are represented here, we're going to put df data frame dot at index. So whatever index we're in, whatever quarter is the quarterly dividend. So in the previous scenario, let's say we have $1 as our annual dividend. Our quarterly dividend will be $0.25 cents in month 1 or April, July, October. And then it's going to put $0.25 cents here, $0.25 cents in this column, $0.25 cents in that column, $0.25 cents in that column. So that's what this whole thing is. Then LF, the month is in 2 5, 8, or 11, it's going to put the quarterly dividend in February, May, August, or November. And then all else, which is the same as saying in 3, 6, 9, and 12, it's going to put it in March, June, September, and October, uh, December. So before we get into plotting it, let me show you what that data frame looks like. And this takes a little bit. And so uh, I will cut the video and come back when it's done posting. All right, so our data frame is complete. So let's check it out now. So we have the symbol and amount, just like it was in our Excel sheet. And now we have the columns out of order, but February, May, August, November. And the reason why it's like that is because Apple, I think, was the first stock. It came down to here, saw that it was in month two, which is February. And then so, so it filled in these four rows. And then the next stock was this one right here, which was in March, and then this one in January. So it went through just like Python does and iterated through the rows and filled it out. So this is, so I was off, Apple doesn't pay a dollar, uh, 23 cents. So we have 23 cents in these four months. This stock uh, reduced its dividend uh, about a year ago, so now it's only paying, or in COVID. Now it's only paying one cent per quarter, 57 cents, etc. And this is all assuming one share held. So now we have a data frame. All right, but it's out of order and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So I'm going to delete this data frame. I'm going to uncomment the rest of my code. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is do a reorder my data frame so data frame equals data frame dot re index which is a method that allows you to change the columns how you want columns equals the symbol i don't need to chart out the amount anymore the share count it served its purpose january february march april may so right so we put these in order that's what this is then we're going to calculate the sums of each column so the sums equals data frame dot sum. Now remember, the new data frame does not have this amount, okay? The axis will be zero. Skip NAs equals true, so it's going to skip any NAs. And then we're going to start on column one, which is actually this column right here, right? We don't want the sum of symbols. That doesn't make any sense. So it's actually saying start after the one, right? This means one to the end. Then we're going to create a horizontal bar chart using matplotlib, so plt.bar. This means horizontal bar, right? The axis will be horizontal. Oh, I'm sorry, this creates a, ver yeah, horizontal bar. Um, it creates vertical bars, sorry, <laughs> vertical bars. If you want horizontal bars, which would look silly, you can just type in H there. Um, sums are the dot index, so we're going to, Get this sums of each one, and that will be our new columns. 
the values are going to be the values of the sums. The width is 0.5, and that is the width of the bars in the chart. And then I want data labels on the top of my bars. So for i and v, which is just a way to iterate through the index and values, right? Sum.index, sum.values, which is i, v. In enumerate, so we're going to enumerate, which is different than uh, iterating, the sum.values. We're going to plot plt.txt, which means you add the text for each index and value. The index, which will be the column name. This is the value plus one, which allows the text to be on top. I want them rounded, right? The value to be rounded as a string. Then we're going to center the value of it. And then the value is at the bottom, right? So that's the align. This is horizontal align and vertical align. Then I want the title to be monthly sums, but that will be dividend tracker or whatever. The X label is going to be sum. The Y label is going to be month. Then we're going to show it. So again, this is going to take a while. And I will cut here. And then I will show you when the matplotlib bar chart comes up. All right, so this is what the, the plot looks like. So we have our monthly sums. Now I rounded it. Because when I use this in my real portfolio, I have more than one share. So the values are more than pennies and cents. But if you're just starting out in your dividend investing career, you can remove the rounding in our code right here. So you can change this, take out the rounding, or you can put in a decimal, a different decimal like that. Um, but for now, this works for us. So as you can see, the index are in order. These are the sums, January, February, March, April. So the this is rounding to $4, but as you can see, it's not quite $4. This is rounding to 3 and 3. But it works a lot better when you um, have the share count is way higher and you have more dividends. But for now, that's uh, pretty good. That's where I want it at right now. So what we're going to go from here is we're going to do some plotly dash. And we're going to create a dashboard, a, a more real dashboard that would look more similar to an app or a website where it has our annual dividends and then it has this bar chart. And so going on beyond that, so probably not in the next video, but in the next previous video, we're going to do the next upcoming dividend and then we'll start working on cost basis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, leave a comment and thanks for watching. Goodbye world.